talk to you about the Numas, but not probably how most people approach you about Numas. Mm. And it was just from a video or a film and a video mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. perspective. And the production's now still in the video and film world around West Michigan. Those productions are legendary. They were shot 35 millimeter. <laughs> yes. I remember were, that. We was, were like, it has to be film. People right. were like, why? And we're like, just because it has to be. That's our answer. Well, and it was <laughs> part of the whole tapestry that plays into that art, that multi-layered sort of thing that wasn't yeah. just this thing. It, it worked with you. It worked with the message and the visuals. And it was pre-high bandwidth. It was pre-YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could only see them on a DVD yeah. or at a church or an and lecture. And nobody or, was talking... You know, I was told uh, a publisher was like, no one's going to watch these. What, this isn't even a thing. This doesn't, this doesn't even exist. There's not, not a category. This isn't like a... I remember one guy who considered himself like an expert, like a global sort of... I understand what's going on. was like, now listen, Rob, maybe if you put these in the back of a book, one That's of your books, then somebody could like pull it out and maybe watch it. But, um, but yeah, no, nobody was talking about that. Yeah. But it's amazing to me. So I'm I'm curious from a, from that creative side of you that that curiosity standpoint. Yeah. When you have messages and sermons, and I think from mm-hmm. your what I'm reading into your career arc is when you were more of a a pastor, church leader yeah. in that mindset. But to use something as radical as almost a American cinema. Yes. Yeah. And that platform to speak so directly to people. That's what's so powerful about your speaking and how you engage, of course. But there's something else about those that have this multi-layer, this music we talked about, you know, scoring and music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole whole package. Was that, that, did you lead that or was that approach to you? I I How did that collaboration happen? it It was a collaboration. I had, for a while, I kept thinking, there's got to be some way to capture this the, these live things I was doing, there was like, it was like a happening. Like there was a, and I was using a lot of, like I was covering the stage with dirt and setting things on fire. And yeah. I was using, a, I used a lot of visuals. So I had this sense, there's got to be a way to capture this cinematically. Mm-hmm. And somebody had said, well, let's just start filming these live. But I had seen that on television. It was like, no, it's, it's, that's a recording, that's a secondary medium. That's a recording of an experience people are having. Right. It's like why the live album's never that good. Right. Because it's, um, <laughs> it's not the primary experience. Yeah. And then some other people were like, well, let's figure it out. Let's start something. And a, a guy named Tom and a guy named Sonny and another guy named Tom were the main ones who were like, wait, let's, let's shoot on real film. Let's uh, make a script and then let's, Okay, so what would be the visual element of the thing you did? Then, mm-hmm. and then, then instead of telling the story, let's show it. Um, so I had had for a while that I know there's a way to cinematically capture this that's yeah. never been seen. I know that. Yeah. And then these guys came along and helped technically took it put way it farther. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, and they just went beyond anything. I, so I would literally show up to the set. I had done the script, and we had worked and then brought in the second draft and the third draft. Mm-hmm. I just kept doing the script until everybody was like, okay, now we have something. Yeah. But then I would show up, and they'd be like, okay, you're going to dig a hole. You're going to set this bonfire. They would like walk me through <laughs> what I was going to do. Was <laughs> um, but that, that, that was, was the all first them. one I saw was this, this, <laughs> yeah, the this, bonfire, this yeah. explosion. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know that wasn't permitted properly. You're on some farmland. Like, you know. We had giant crews. We, had, we were doing things... We were flying, running out of daylight. People, it was just complete madness. Yeah. And then when people started watching them, it was like, it, it, the effect was just extraordinary to see what it did to people. Yeah. Well, I think it's because the craft was there, but it was the story. It's it inca- it encapsulated in a wholly different way, like you said, uh, different than seeing you do something really unique uh, in person. Yeah. Yeah. And it still was rooted in that, but it transformed it to this medium that felt important and heavy. 
yeah. in a way, but it was yeah. still had this ephemeral warmth and yeah. love and your passion and excitement yeah. for the world. So just as filmmaking pieces, I just have to like <laughs> hats off. People still talk about them, like Do they really? production crews and like. The Do they really? Are, yeah, they're legendary. This Full Exposure Podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.